Shalom, shalom. I am Pastor Juanita Weiss. Shalom, I'm Rabbi David Weiss, and we bring you greetings from the Chulchai Messianic Congregation in Chesapeake, Virginia. Yes, yes. It is always a joy to be with you, and we are here and just wanted to share with you Ashrei, right? That idea of being glad and joyous and fortunate, right? Because we are our children of the Most High God, and and we are learning every day, right, to be those ones that he has called pure in heart, because those are the ones that will see God. Mm -hmm. And as we are learning that, as we are walking this journey, we get to experience Ashrei. That is an, an amazing state. It's a blessed state. Um, and we can only really secure this state, right? Can only live this state because of Yeshua. And so he gives us all these opportunities that we can study his Torah. We can study his word. Uh, we were talking as we were studying the book of Yaakov, the epistle of James. Mm -hmm. And um, ju just that idea of uh, uh, standing, right? And uh, allowing uh, Hashem to work out in us this idea of endurance, right? When endurance has her perfect work, we too can be perfect and entire. And, you know, it's really a state of Asherah. Everything is about that, that he has allowed us to live in this blessed, fortunate, all oh, the gladness of state, mm -hmm. right here in this life, in this, in the olam, in the olam hazeh, the world that is now, so that when we get in olam haba, the world to come, it's just going to be a segue, but a greater, greater enjoyment, because we're going to be able to enjoy it without limitations of the flesh. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I, I, I love it that, you know, when you talked about endurance, too, that um, that endurance is not just mm. a feeling. It's not just, well, I will endure, but endurance is, is action. Mm -hmm. And it's action that goes hand in hand uh, yes. with the faith that you've already got. So, I mean, people can have strong faith uh, until they're tested. And then when they're tested, you know, uh, that shows whether their, their faith yes. will hold up and endure. And uh, and I, I think it's beautiful because endurance does call us to go into action. Yes, yes. And, you know, the tests that we go through, you know, Hashem knows that with the Ruach HaKodesh, with uh, community, with Mishpocha, mm -hmm. we can endure this, right? The, we're bearing one another's burdens. We're encouraging one another, building one another up. The Ruach HaKodesh is empowering us to push through. We can do this. So whatever you're going through, beloved, just know um, that it has come, as a, a friend of mine used to say, it came just so it could pass. So this too shall pass. It will pass. All you have to do is endure it and it will pass. And so he calls us to this, this amazing place of endurance and in that uh, we get to experience Ashrei. Um, Rav Shaul says it's it's with great tribulation that we will enter into the kingdom of God, mm -hmm. right? Into the Malchut. So we can't think that this is going to be an easy journey. I know uh, there was a time when probably we thought that, that this was going to be an easy journey because we also thought that this was a solo journey, right? It's yes. like, okay, it's me and I'm in this journey and all I have to do is just make it in, just make it in. Ever been there, ever said that? Well, I think this life is more than about 
than just making it in, yeah. right? Because when I learned and, and it was shared through um, various rabbis in Yeshiva Chuvu who shared this, that what we do in this life is for the merit of Yisrael. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is such an eye opener. It's like all the deeds that you're doing, when you do it, right? Uh, in the name of Hashem, when you, in the name of Yeshua, mm -hmm. and you do it because you love Hashem, guess what? It's going to be credited, if you will, to Yisrael. So yeah, so keep doing those good deeds. Keep doing those mitzvot. Keep uh, reading the Torah and keep uh, understanding the high holy days and being a part of the Moedim because this brings um, merit to Yisrael. Um, you know, as we're talking about this, we're we're uh, quickly approaching the high holy days, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we are now in the month of Elul. Uh, this month um, uh, is all about uh, the king being out in the field, and we get to go out to meet him as he is in the field. But we can't go out to meet him any kind of way, right? We have to be dressed uh, appropriately. And the best dress is teshuva. You want mm -hmm. to talk about teshuva uh, a little teshuva. bit? Teshuva is, is repentance. And so within teshuva, there is shuving, shuv, which is a turning. And it's, it's, it's not a 360 degree turn. It's a 180 degree turn. So uh, having the will to turn away, literally turn away, turn your back on sin, sinful desires, sinful reactions, to turn your back filled with the Ruach HaKodesh to say, Lord, I don't want to even be attracted to this action or this reaction mm. again. I'm, I'm, I just, I feel a, a sense that I'm, that I am turned, I have turned away from you and I want to turn back to you. So we don't just turn away. You know, my mom used to say, don't just tell me what you're not going to do. Tell me what you're going to do. So we don't just turn away from sin, but we turn towards God. Mm. And, and that means every time we turn towards God, we turn away from sin. Yeah, that idea of turning from sin and toward God. That, beloved, is indeed teshuva. You know, this, um, this, the month, this month, Elul, is an acrostic for Ani Lidodi Vidodi Li. I am my beloved and my beloved is mine. Isn't that beautiful? Mm. That overarching us under this canopy of Elul, Ani Lidodi Vidodi Li, we get to understand that he wants to be with us, right? I am my beloved and my beloved is mine. I mean, he's saying that and we are saying, he's saying that about us. Yeah. And we're saying that about him. And we get to experience that this month. So every day of this month, as you're doing Selichot, as you're doing uh, Teshuva, as you're doing self-introspection, think about that. Your beloved is saying you are you belong to him. Yes. You are his. And, you know, uh, I heard someone say that, uh, you know, as they were praying, it's like, Lord, purify your bride. But, you know, uh, Revelation um, uh, 19 says the bride has made herself ready, right? It's like we have to do this. I know it. We want Hashem to do it all. We want him to purify us. We want, but there is something for us to do, right? Yeshua has already done the work. Now, what is it for us to do? We are in this place of sanctification, right? Yes. Kadosh. We are in this place of becoming Kadosh, becoming holy. And it is not a one and done. Mm -hmm. It is a journey. It is a process. And he has called us to this. And the month of Elul awakens us to that process. It awakens us to the fact that the king is there. He has come out of his palace, if you will. He has come down from his heavenly abode. Mm. He is in the field and he wants to encounter us. And it's just like the, the person coming to the wedding and dressing in whatever clothes he wants to dress in. Well, guess what? He was kicked out. 
right? He, he was not allowed in the wedding. And this is the same thing as we're approaching Hashem. Who, who shall uh, stand in his holy hill? The one with clean hands and a pure heart. And that's what we're in the process of doing. So we just pray during this month that there is that self-introspection, mm -hmm. that it, there is that looking within. Lord, what is there something in my heart that needs to be examined by the light of your Ruach is, is there someone else? Is there someone that I have an ought with? Right. And remember, as we're approaching Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur is about national sin. It has nothing to do with the one and one on one sin, right. That uh, I have against you or you have against me that it, that, that is not the atonement for that because we have to make it right. We have to do it. And this month of Elul awakens us to it. So I want you to know it's in the atmosphere. It's there. The, the spirit of teshuva is there. The spirit of forgiveness is there. Because if someone is going to make teshuva, then the next thing to do is like there has to be forgiveness. And this is not the month where we say, I can't forgive. I can't forgive. No, there's something in the atmosphere that is quickening a heart of forgiveness in each one of us. And Hashem wants us to walk in that. Amen. That's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you know, to help you on your journey of Elul, we have at Malchut Chaim, um, I've been just so blessed by uh, several writers who have accompanied me in, in various journeys of crafting um uh, uh, devotionals to use for the month of Elul leading up to Rosh Hashanah, Yom Teruah, and also um, Yom Kippur. And one of them is the put on, put off. Okay. That's the devotional where we really understand that there's some things, as Rav Shaul says in Romans 13, there's some things that we need to take off and there's something we need to put on. We need to put on Messiah Yeshua. How do we do that? What are the things that are weighing us down, right? What improper clothing are we wearing at this point? And there are all kinds of um, de devotionals written by some very anointed writers, like putting off impatience and putting on patience. And so the writers will help you to walk through that. How do I do that? Is that me? Is that uh, a place that I need to be strengthened? Mm -hmm. And the second one is Clothed in Messiah. This was put out in 2023. And what's interesting about this is we had some additional writers and uh, even the ones uh, who walked with us through this journey again, they began to take different topics from the ones they had taken in this book, right? And they began to share. So because you can never, listen, you never can tire of taking off, putting off complacency and putting on zeal. There is not a time when we can stop doing that. It is not a one and done, right? It is incessant. You know, uh, in our um, Yaakov study, we were talking about how um, as we are on this journey of endurance, right? It's not a place that we're going to reach in this life. It's going to take us into the Olam Haba. It's going to take us like from this, this journey, this point until the grave, right? Mm -hmm. And then it takes us into the Olam Haba. So it's not a one and done. And these will help you every year. And it's not just for Elul. Uh, there are 40 days here that will take you th through this time, but you can use these any time of the year, any time of the year. You just want a refreshing, right? You just want a time of introspection. You just want um, a time of reflection. These uh, um, devotional entries will help you on that journey. There, there are places for you to put notes and prayers and reflections and revelations. There are places where you can make application. There are place, the places where there are prayers for you. There are challenges for you. Um, so you will be very, very blessed by either of these books. 
And so what's so exciting is, even though I don't have the third book, there is a third book that we have. It's a devotional and it can be used for this time of the year. There's an introduction that tells you about Elul and it's entitled Walking Daily with the Father. You can find that on amazon.com uh, under my name, Juanita Weiss. And it will, it's not too late. We've just started the month of Elul. And even if we're not in Elul, it's a time where you just want to reflect. You just want to experience Hashem at every moment in every season. And that's what you'll find me doing like throughout the seasons of the year. Mm -hmm. You can find in the fall, in the winter, in the summer, in going to the bank, going to the store. How am I encountering the father even in my daily activities? And that's what he wants us to do, right? Because he's mm -hmm. there. Yeah. He's there in, at every turn, every point. He's there. Going to the grocery store, he's there. Going to the hair salon, he's there. Going to the barbershop, he's there. And so you get to uh, encounter him on these daily journeys that I take throughout the seasons of the year uh, with the Father and just encountering him and just loving on him and allowing him to speak to my heart. And uh, actually, there were times when uh, I was really convicted by some things. And there was times when I was so illuminated, um, you know, by his presence mm -hmm. and the, the fact that that he would encounter me that way. So oh, we love God's yeah, encounter. Yes. When he yes. just deigns to come down and to yeah. touch us, the God of the universe touching yes. small insignificant us yeah because he loves us and cares Amen. about us Amen. so all three books they can get from amazon amazon.com they are there online put on put off clothed in messiah and the last one is entitled walking daily with the father let's see uh we've got some comments here and maybe someone has already purchased the book i mean i mean hallelujah um as someone says his desire is for, for us to have fellowship with him. That's it. He wants that. And so in this latest book, um, every day, opening our senses, opening our, if you will, if I can say this, spiritual pores, right? So that we can sense Hashem, having those spiritual antenna up, making sure that we don't miss one moment when he's encountering us. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I had seen, I was sitting in a car listening to a song and there was an encounter with that song and something that was happening even in the oh. sky. It's like, yes, in the bank and just waiting, just waiting for my turn. And there was an encounter. So I, I'm just sure you'll be blessed by this because as um, someone said, you know, oh, there it is. Someone said, yes, I have mine. Amen, amen, amen. Walking with the Father moves us into our daily life and recognizing him in our day. His presence is sitting, walking, working. <laughs> I love that. Right along with us. Isn't that beautiful? Amen. And that's the idea. If you're going to the bank, you sit down, right? His presence is there. You're walking along the way. His presence is there, right? You're at work. Well, he's working right alongside of you. He's always bringing forth something. I, I love that idea where Yeshua says, uh, my father is still working and so am I, right? Yeah, it's like my father has not stopped working. You know, even though on that, after the sixth day, he rested on the seventh, um, Yeshua says he's still working, right? He's still working. That's just so beautiful. Yeah. And um, someone said the test will um, make you even stronger because Adonai will never leave us, right? So whatever test you're going through, just know his purpose is to make you stronger, is to make you stronger. It's not to kill you. It's not to destroy you. Uh, it's just to make you stronger so that you can endure. You can endure. You can persevere, and you can pass that test. Mm. Amen, amen. 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 We're just so excited, you know, walking daily with the Father. We're so excited about uh, these gems that the Lord has given to us, and we're just blessed um, for you to to take part in these. Amen. 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 
Um, <laughs> someone said, I'm, um, I am certain Yeshua doesn't sit outside my work door waiting for me. He is sitting with me and helping me make decisions and wise choices. I love it. You know, um, that reminded me of the, the movie Hachi, you know, how the dog waits outside, mm -hmm. you know, for um, his owner to get off work so they can yes. walk home together. But she's saying he's not waiting outside. He's right there in the midst of uh, my journey, in the midst of my day, helping me to make the decisions I need to make during the course of the day. That's so mm -hmm. awesome. Yes. Man, thank you all so much for your comments. Well, uh, just to let you know, we had an amazing woman of God who was going to be with us. and um, But we're going to get a rain check because she is moving. Actually, she's moved, she moved from Alaska back, back to, um, well, to Texas. But she had to take a ferry from Alaska to Washington State. And from there, she was going to drive to Texas. And so that her schedule was thrown off a bit. So she's not able to be with us uh, today during our study, but um, we are going to have her again because you will be blessed by her testimony. So we just want to send a shout out to her and uh, to thank her at least for saying yes to being on our show. So what are we going to talk about today, Rabbi? I think we're going to talk about Parshat uh, Shoftim, yes. which in Deuteronomy 16 to 21 is all about, uh, it's all about, well, there's so many things. It, well, let's bring it amen. to the stage. Amen. Let's do that. Amen, amen, amen. So uh, let's see. Um, okay. All right, we better leave it there because if I hit another button. I know it might turn another <laughs> weird shade. Another color. So this is called We Must Not Go Back. And if we start in Devarim, Deuteronomy chapter 17, uh, verse 14. When you come to the land that Adonai, your God, is giving you, possess it and dwell in it. And you say, I will set a king over me. Like all the nations around me, you will indeed set over yourselves a king whom Adonai, your God, chooses. One from among your brothers will be appointed as king over you. You may not put a foreigner over you who is not your brother. Only he should not multiply horses for himself or make the people return to Egypt to multiply horses. Because Adonai has said to you, you must never go back that way again. Wow. So Egypt has always been such a lure for God's people as a symbol of safety and as a snare, even as a blessing. Abraham goes there and is almost ensnared by the Pharaoh who wants his wife. But Hashem gives him victory and he leaves with many treasures. Yaakov, Jacob, follows his son Yosef to Egypt. There, he experiences a reunion like no other. Favor from the king, and prosperity for his family. Ultimately, his children experienced slavery and human bondage. Mm -hmm. Moses brings them out of that bondage, but they still want to return for the surety of leeks and onions. Yet Adonai tells his people not to return, even though our master Yeshua experiences safety there from Herod, until Hashem calls for his son from her bowels. Even today, some Jews take this very literally in not returning, not even as a tourist. I believe Adonai was talking about something greater than the above instances. The writer of Hebrews captures it. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Instead, he chose to suffer mistreatment along with the people of God, rather than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. He considered the disgrace of Messiah as greater riches than the treasures of Egypt, because he was looking ahead to the reward. By faith, he left Egypt. Mm -hmm. 
when life gets difficult, we cannot regress. We cannot long for the instant pleasures of sin when God is calling us to great worth and value in him. We cannot think that the horses and chariots of any country will protect us when Adonai is our defense. Let us learn this lesson as Moses learned it and say, you can have all the leeks, onions, pleasures, horses, and chariots of Egypt. I will take what is true and eternal. And then, Abba, give us the grace to choose you in all things and resolve, I will not go back. Bizrat Hashem. Only Bizrat Hashem, only with the help mm. of Hashem. So let's take a look at this because, you know, there are so many things in this Parsha, right, yeah. that, that you could write about, but my eyes are focused on that. Don't go back there again. And you were telling us about Shoftim and, and, and uh, some of the topics that are there. Yes, yes. I mean, we, we hear about uh, Moses' recounts, how uh, when people were lining up to get advice from him, uh, the word came uh, through his father-in-law, from God to his father-in-law to him, appoint judges over yourselves. And then he talks about the king. Uh, God also talks about things that he hates, that are abominations, that are detestable to him. And uh, there there are many, many wonderful talking points and uh, uh, commandments from the Lord to to help us walk, walk in his way. Uh, I like yeah. all of them. Yes, yes. And appointing the judges. Uh, the shoturim, the the police officers, yep. if you will, yep. prophets, and appointing them, and kings, which is where our subject is right now. So, um, so he he says to them, right through Moses, actually, like uh, when you come to the land that your God is giving you to possess, he says, basically. The king is not to amass a lot of horses because what you're going to do is, well, let's go back to Egypt and get more horses. And in that way, you will have other people. Once again, that lure is always there yes. for Egypt. And that's that's the um, uh, the literal meaning of the text, right? Don't go back to buy new horses because you're not supposed to amass a lot of horses. Yes. Right? Because who's your, you know, we we will not trust in horses or chariots, but we will trust in the name of our God. Amen. For by the way, for our audience that may not know it, amassing horses me it's is going to make you a stronger army. Mm -hmm. And what God is saying is is I am your deliverer. Don't think that you can be delivered uh, from your enemies just because you amass an army or the things that an army needs to be a great fighting force. All you need to fight your enemies is having trust and dedication to me. Yeah. I will be your deliverer. Yes. I am your defense, basically, he's saying. And so he says in the Peshat, in the literal understanding, he says... Only he should not multiply horses for himself or make the people return to Egypt to multiply horses. So don't even send anyone back to Egypt to purchase one horse, right? Because Adonai said you must never go back that way again. So we're going to talk about that in just a second. But we want to talk about Mitzrayim. And we'd love to hear from you, those of you who are uh, listening to us. What is the, the Hebrew... So if you were reading a Hebrew Bible, you would not see Egypt, right? You would see Mitzrayim. Um, so what is Egypt to you, Rabbi? What, what does it symbolize? And when you read about it, like if you do a word association, if I said Mitzrayim, or if I said Egypt, what would come to your mind? What comes to wow. mind when you think of it? What a great question. So I see, I see Egypt as being a symbolic level that we've all had in Egypt in our lives where we were kind of asleep spiritually. We didn't know 
of the wonders of God. We didn't know of the greatness of God and the, the mercy of God. And what did we do? We were slogging through our lives, trying to make it, thinking of number one, if you will, and thinking that our by our own power, uh, by by you know just clambering to the top of the heap, uh, that we all we needed was our own resources to to get whatever we wanted mm. in in this life. And the harder you fight, uh, the more you'll get. Mm. Uh, you know. And so I think Egypt, in a way, is 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 a life of death. It's a life of spiritual death. That we or spiritual numbness that we were all in before God delivered us. Yeah, you know, um, when we even look at that word Mitzrayim, um, in, in the Hebrew, you've got a mem in the beginning and a mem at the end, mm -hmm. right? The Hebrew letters. And so the the sages looked at that and they said, Oh, this is a place of constraint, right? You you're like locked in. Uh, on both sides and it's difficult to get out. And we know that, right? Because that's what happened. Now, someone was saying Egypt, it, to the word association, wilderness, hardship, self-sufficient, lacking uh, distress, right? It's, mm. So it's, it's the hardship, self-sufficient. You're trying to do it on your own. And someone else said, oh, it's bondage, right? Uh, life or death, right? Um, I think you said that it's either life or or, or death there in, in Mitzrayim, you know? So uh, this place of, uh, of constraints, mm -hmm. right? Constraints, restraints, whatever it is, that's what you'd normally think of in the hardship, the self-sufficient, lacking distress, right? Uh, bondage, as someone said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't Mitzrayim a plural word because it's got the im at the end? Mm -hmm. And so we think of Egypt as one country, but if we look at the plurality of what a bondage can be, I, I think it's also saying that there can be many, many uh, places, circumstances that could lead to a type of bondage that we may not even realize that there are a, there is a plurality of things around us that just want to ensnare mm, us yeah. in, in this life. Yeah, yeah. And that was good. I wanted to correct what she said, uh, that Egypt is a life of death, right? A mm. life of death, which makes it so graphic, that, uh, that understanding. Wow. So let's look at, you know, we talked about Yaakov. We talked about Avraham. We talked about Moses. We even talked about Yeshua. And let's consider one of the ways that Mitzrayim was a blessing, a, a, a snare, or safety uh, for one of the um, patriarchs. And wh why would Hashem use uh, Mitzrayim in this way, you think? Because for Abraham, it, there was a famine. Yeah. So he goes, yeah. right? And he's living. And actually, well, we know what happened with Sarai, but he comes out with more than he had. Now, Yaakov doesn't yeah. want to go, mm -hmm. but Hashem meets him and says, go, because I'm going with you. I love it. Mm. Well, you know, God may put circumstances in our life where he's going to have us go into a place mm. where we don't know why we're there. Mm, that's good. And But he never wants us to stay there. If he's going to put us in a place and that we don't understand, I think if we just keep in touch spiritually, uh, communing with God, he will show us the purpose that he has us mm. in that foreign place. Invariably, it's got to be to, to bring the word of God to, to a people that doesn't know it so that he can draw them in. But he doesn't want us to stay there. Yes. He wants to bring the faithful back to the land yes. of promise. Yes. Just like he told Jacob. He said, I will always, if you commit yourself to me, I will always bring you back to this land. Yes, yes. And with Yeshua, Yeshua found, right, jo Yosef uh, and Miriam, they found safety there mm -hmm. for the newborn. Yeah. But he says, and the, the Malak comes and says, okay, the, the Herod, the one who was wanting the baby dead, 
is now dead. You can come back. So it's very interesting that we will experience those times in our lives, right? The hardship, the distress, the wilderness. Yes. We will experience a life of death. But I believe that for the believer, that is not a place where he will allow us to stay. Mm -hmm. If we have a heart to listen to him, Yosef had to listen. And uh, when he says, okay, it's time to come back now. Yaakov had to listen. Okay, it's time to leave. Um, um, well, of course, he stayed until he died, but he wanted his his burial not in Mitzrayim. He wanted it in in Canaan, right? He wanted it there. Yeah. Uh, so where, wherever you are, if you feel like you're like between the, in in the midst of constraints and restraints, just know. As my friend used to say, it only came so it could pass. It will pass. You just have to endure it, right? Um, and yes, yes. Um, when Abraham goes in, he comes out with more than he had. I love this movie. There's this movie about Abraham and Sarah. And uh, so Sarah is, is taken by the king, mm -hmm. by, by the pharaoh. And uh, Abraham is waiting and then we know what happens. The Pharaoh gets the dream and he's like, why didn't you tell me this was your wife? And he lets her go. And so on the outside, now he says, take what you want. So Avram takes flocks and so forth. Mm -hmm. And he's waiting outside the city for Sarah. And then there's this beautiful image. They cut to Sarah and here she is riding in a chariot. Wow. And she comes out with Hagar. They say that's probably where she... She got Hagar yes. too. She comes with her handmaidens and behind her is a wagon load. I mean, it's like a caravan of items that she brings with her out of uh, Bitzrayim as well. It's, it's absolutely powerful. But, but I think that is a rhema word. If you are in Mitzrayim, expect to come out with more than you went in with, but there has to be an endurance. You have to endure and you have to hear Hashem saying, okay, it's time to move forward now. That's good. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it doesn't always have to be coming out with, with riches or material goods. It, com it could be coming out with a lot more wisdom, more knowledge, mm -hmm. more faith, more understanding than you had before. Yeah. And more of an acuity to hear his voice. Yeah. That's what we want, right? As Even as we're going through the month of Elul, we're saying, Lord, would you make our hearing acute, right? Mm -hmm. Even though there, he speaks with a still small voice, that voice, as I always pray, even though it's still a still small voice, Abba, you can make it the loudest voice that we hear, right? It can, it can, because my hearing is now acute, my spiritual hearing, that is, to hear from him and to hear his voice. So let's see. Um, I had a few more here. Yes. Uh, oh, is there anything in Egypt that is a lure for you? Is there anything there that's a lure for you? I think if we look at the history of why they went to Egypt, I mean, it's a Nile River Delta. It was the only place during the time of Yosef that had food in abundance because mm -hmm. God gave Joseph that knowledge. And so it had sustenance. It had water. I mean, it had rich delta land to grow things, and we may find that uh, that that there it may be a time of of you know of of great gifts that you might pick up there. But God doesn't want you to stay there. Mm. He it's it's for a purpose. It's for a time, mm -hmm. and just just in His perfect timing there's also a time to come out. And if people don't heed that call, if they're not attuned to God's voice, mm. when he says, now it's time to come out, well, that that's the danger zone when we can fall asleep and get a little bit numb and say, well, I'm living a nice fat life here. Mm. Why do I want to leave yeah. all this that I've got? Yeah. Yes. You know, uh, ASAP asked a question here and I, and and this can be a lure for for people, and it certainly could be a lure for me as well. Because when you're walking with Hashem, 
and you see, you look on the outside and you see the unbeliever um, flourishing. So this is what Asaph says in Psalm 73. He says, um, surely God is good to Yisrael, to those who are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet had almost slipped. As a matter of fact, this is one of my mom's favorite Psalms. But as for me, my feet had almost slipped. I had nearly lost my foothold. What did it? For I envied the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. And that is such a lure, right? Even in terms of wondering, why are they prospering and I'm not, right? That they're wicked and, and, and I'm trying to pursue the heart of God. And then he says this, ASAP says this, if I had said, I will speak thus, I would have betrayed your children. Yeah, I thought it, right? And then he said this, when I tried to understand all this, it was oppressive to me till I entered the sanctuary of God. Mm -hmm. Then I understood their final destiny. He's saying there is, even if you're wondering why they are prospering, right? That lure with the wicked, because that's what Mitzrayim re represents here. That lure is insufficient because you know their end. You know what's going to happen to them. And ASAP says the same thing. So that certainly, just the wonderment, right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, when he tells them, I wanted to share this actually, when he tells them not to, not even to go back that way, into uh, Israel, I wanted to share some things that the uh, the sages said. Right? Um, let's see. Um, Ibn Ezra uh, says that this was a commandment: you are not to go that way again. It was a commandment, but it was not written down. And he thinks it, it comes from Exodus fourteen thirteen, where Hashem says to Moses and to all Israel, all the Hebrews coming out of Egypt, that this Pharaoh that you see today, you will never see again, right? And so he's saying, don't go back there that way again. It's based upon that particular verse. Mm. Rambam says it's a negative commandment, but it's for all time. That's why we were saying that even today, there uh, some Jews feel like it's not even a place to visit because of that negative commandment. Do not go back there again. And he went on to say that what Hashem was saying is do not settle there, right? Do not live there. Mm -hmm. Okay. You go back yeah. to get this or that, but don't expect to settle there. Like, um, um, uh, let's see, uh, Abimelech, Av Avimelech did in Moab. Um, let's see. Rabbeinu Bachia says that it's a commandment that's only valid during the period it was promulgated. So it was only valid for that time. It does not mean that it's valid today. So you can, mm. you can see um, the Machlokets here. Uh, and he also says after the destruction of the temple, a lot of Torah scholars lived in Mitzrayim, right? Remember uh, Alexandria? Alexandria yeah. was a huge city full of Torah scholars. As a matter of fact, they said that Alexandria in, in Mitzrayim had the biggest Hebrew library. But guess what happened to it? It was destroyed. It was destroyed. It was burned down. Why? They were setting up homes there, right? Yeah. This is where yeah. they were living. And um, he says um, that those who left Egypt, this is uh, Rabbeinu Bachi as well. He says, if you left Egypt, you cannot go back that way again. So he's specifically saying that for those who left Egypt physically, that they should not go back that way again. And the only people who were forbidden to dwell in Egypt were Jews who left the land of Israel to do so, right? If you're going to leave the land of Israel just to live in Egypt, it's forbidden. It's forbidden. And so I thought those were interesting. What do you think about those? Oh, I think they're all right. And that's why I think for, for
for every person who identifies as Jewish, um, if they don't know how great it feels to be in the land of Israel, the first time they have a trip there, mm. they realize this is more of my homeland yes. than any place else I've ever been. Mm. I, I had that feeling when I was 11 years old in 1966. I, I felt like America is my homeland, uh, but I want to go and visit. And when I went with my, my family at the age of 11, I got off the plane mm. And I realized that this is really my homeland. And uh, um, that's, it's not an easy place to live, but I know that Israel is always my homeland. Yeah, it's very interesting. I know he's talking literally uh, in the Peshat understanding. He's mm -hmm. talking about Mitzrayim. But do you think that any other place other than Israel is Mitzrayim? What do you think? Uh, actually, as you think about that, someone said uh, it had a comfortable feeling too, right? Yeah, because it was better than being in the wilderness. It was better than walking over a hot sand yeah. with no real destination, right? Just, Mitzrayim was, was more comfortable. Complacency will keep us in bondage. And that is so true what someone uh, else just said in the chat complacency it keeps us in bondage okay i'm satisfied with where i am you know we can look at that in a in a spiritual sense too it's like my nishama it's like am i satisfied with my walk with the lord i shouldn't ever be right mm -hmm. we should never be satisfied that's why these books will help you on your journey help you on this journey during the month of elul that like I'm not satisfied with where I am right now, Abba. I I want more because that complacency could lead us right back to Egypt. And I believe Hashem is saying, do not go back there again, right? Actually, to get to your question from just a minute or two ago, uh, is it just a literal Egypt or could it be more than just the, the land that we know of as Egypt? And I think I'm, I'll just give the rabbinic answer, yes and yes. <laughs> of course, it refers to the the actual Egypt, which uh, was only back then uh, with its pharaoh. Uh, but it also refers to any place that God has desired to bring us out of where he, he's, he wants to move us into a new place, into a new area of time. Mitzrayim doesn't even have to be a physical land. It could be a, it could be a, um, uh, a feeling or it could be a mode of thinking, uh, a hopelessness, even a sense of hopelessness, of difficulty that God wants to bring us out of. I, I think it's more than just physical land or geography. Yes, yes. Um, uh, and Jackie, I hope you're writing all of this down because this is really, really good. Uh, she said, um, uh, uh, actually, one uh, said, person said, like during this time, if you're ever in Mitzrayim, you know, you're listening for his voice and he sends you back there just as he sent Yaakov and, and Avraham. You, it's a time to trust in his word, right? It's a time to, to spend that time with him. And um, also the Haftarah portion mm -hmm. that we're reading this week, as we're reading the um, the um, uh, the consolations, right? The Psalms of consolations. He's in Isaiah fifty-two. Awake, awake! Stop sleeping. Be alert. Be aware. Be aware that you have moved back to Mitzrayim. Mm -hmm. be, be aware, because I think is like that lure is there, and it's in in each of us, right? Uh, Isaiah 43, 18 through 19, Adonai wants to do new things. Forget about the old things. Forget about the past, right? Forget about everything you experienced there. As a matter of fact, I wanted to take a look at this. Let's see if we can find it uh, right here. Oh, I'm going to have to go here first. Um, let's see. Oh, yes. This is uh, as... Um, one viewer was saying he wants to do new things to forget about the old. 
Look at this. Uh, could you read that? Oh, you this see is, it? Yes. This yes. is good. I believe um, this, by the way, uh, is, uh, well, I'll just read it. I believe Adonai was talking about something greater than the above instances. The writer of Hebrews captures it. He, this is Hebrews 11, 24 to 26. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Instead, he chose to suffer mistreatment along with the people of God, rather than to enjoy the passing mm. pleasures of sin. He considered the disgrace of Messiah as greater riches than the treasures of Egypt, because he was looking ahead to the reward. By faith, he left Egypt. Yes, it just reminds me of what ASAP said. I just don't understand why they're flourishing, why the wicked's flourishing. Well, I think Moses understood. He says, well, I'd rather um, just endure, right? All of the mistreatment that my people are getting than to enjoy the pleasures of um, sin for a season. And that's all it is, beloved. If we are dealing, if we are going back to Ms. Mitzrayim, remember, it's just for a season. The pleasures that you're experiencing, they will not last. They will not last. You know, before we move on, there's something so genius in what the writers, writer of Hebrews said. Now we have to think back in the days of Moses, the Yeshua HaMashiach had not yet been born. And yet the Mashiach, which is the anointed mm. one, the one who delivers, Moses did meet, he did meet a, a, a God as a Mashiach, a Mashiach, as an anointed one who delivered him from Egypt. If he thought back on his life, as to, mm. wow, I got lucky. I really got out of a situation. Uh, but now I'm kind of, you know, my family's back there. And here I am, a shepherd for 40 years. And I think when he looks back, when he meets God, uh, hears his voice, uh, pay I'll pay uh, in the burning bush, there must have been a whole lot of realization that came to him that God has always been looking out for him. God has delivered him even when he didn't quite understand it. He must have seen God as his anointed deliverer, mm. even from the time where he was on the run, barely escaping from, from uh, Pharaoh's soldiers back mm. in Egypt. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I wanted to... Um, uh, someone said here, Mitzrayim, Egypt, is the places we walk back to. <laughs> Those are the places. And notice it's back, right? We walk back to. He brought us out of that. Why go back to that? You know, um, it's, um, I was just thinking about, uh, you know, one of the actors who, uh, it was a drug overdose, right? But there was um, someone saying uh, that he had asked the the one who was supplying him the drugs. He says, "I want the big one. I, I want. I don't want to feel anything. I want. I want the big one, right?" And that, mm -hmm. of course, was the one that led to his death. But yeah. that's you know that's what we want. Those pleasures. He wanted the big one. He wanted to feel feel numb. He just wanted to feel uh, euphoria. And that's what we think is lasting. And it's not. The only lasting euphoria is in Hashem, is in Yeshua. Mm. Hallelujah. Moses had his moments for sure, but he also surrendered to God, even in the pain of being told he wouldn't. Wow. He wouldn't set foot in the promised land. He surrendered. And out of that, he begins to tell them, you guys are going to go in and you need to make sure you fear God. You need to make sure you serve him. You need to make sure you love him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Yeah. Awesome. And, awesome. And that is so crucial because if Moses was anything like the first generation that came out, he could have been sour grapes. He could have said, wow. I we if I had just stayed in Egypt, you know, he didn't say any of that. The writer who who 
you just read from is was saying that Moses lived it to the very end, trusting mm -hmm. in God as his deliverer, even in accepting that he could not go into Egypt. He knew that uh, he just knew that God was just going to find another way to deliver him. Yes, yes, yes. And, you know, as um, we go forward, because what we find, and I know you've seen this too since October 7th, mm -hmm. there's always been that parallel in every Parsha to what's going on in Israel. And even specifically here, you know, God has given them leaders. And we know that a lot of um, the unrest, the civil unrest in Israel is because of decisions made by their leaders, mm. right? And as uh, Rabbi Shapira, you know, teaches that um, the idea is unity, is achdut. Yes. That is when God moves. It's in the unity. And so when he speaks to the, uh, he speaks to uh, Israel here and he says, look to the king that will come up. Do not amass horses. Do If you do that, do not send anyone back to Egypt to buy one horse mm -hmm. because you're not to go that back that way again. And beloved, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, if he has taken you out of Mitzrayim, don't go back. If it's the anger, if it's the unforgiveness, that's Mitzrayim. It's a place of constraint. All of those things will constrain us so that we can't move forward. And we want to move forward in Hashem. We're now in the month of Elul. Mm. We're looking forward to Rosh Hashanah. We're looking forward to the holiest day of the year, right? When we can join together with Klal Yisrael, all of Israel, and we can encourage and pray that Israel would be in the place where she needs to be so that she, right? She is responsible for making the atonement for the nations, right? Um, she is, she needs to be in her place because when she's in her place, um, there's oneness between the Messiah and Yisrael. Wow. And the nations can receive that beauty of Sukkot when there is a celebration for the nations. It's absolutely wow. amazing the way the Lord has planned it, right? That's such a great way to end our broadcast for today that uh, as we look forward to this month of Elul, to uh, to just know that God is bringing you ever closer to him. Yeah. May you be blessed by what we talked about today. God bless you, in Yeshua's name. Yes, thank you so much. And thank you to those who wrote your comments. Amen. We so appreciate you. Blessings and blessings all. Amen, be amen. If you missed today's show or want to watch it again or want to tell someone where they can watch this episode, go to lambnetwork.tv. There you will find this show and all the other live Lamb Show archives in the on-demand section of the website. Thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to tell someone about the Messianic Lamb Network. We are richly blessed to bring you what we believe is the fullest, most diverse, yet up-to-date progressive teachings, discussion, and prayer programming you can find anywhere on this planet. Be sure to take the tour of the MessianicLambRadio.com website. I'm Susan Hoogie, thanking you for joining us on the Messianic Lamb Video Network. Shri Yishev Lev